Ken Moore is Chief Innovation Officer at MasterCard. In this role, Ken leads MasterCard Foundry, a collective of interdisciplinary teams from data scientists and engineers to futurists and marketers with the vision to accelerate the future of commerce through innovation and experience. His team works across MasterCard and with partners to power innovation and customer experiences to differentiate MasterCard with clients, build great products, and build and equip great product managers. And he joins us now. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Where are we in terms of the metaverse today and where do you foresee it taking us in the future? So I think we're really at the start of the metaverse today. Um, fully immersive environments, fully immersive worlds are probably still a number of years away. Other technologies that sometimes get included in the term metaverse, like augmented reality, uh, those technologies, I think they're here today. Where are we going in the future? I think we're really seeing an incredible opportunity to reinvent the way that we work, shop and play. And you anticipate that happening how near in the future? So I think, again, if you start to look at augmented reality versus fully immersive worlds, I think augmented reality, we're going to really see that change the way that we shop, the way that we buy, the way that we socialize in the next two, three years. We're already seeing today in different parts of the world. So I showed an example yesterday of a restaurant in Beijing where you go in, depending on what you order, the entire world around you changes, right? So if you order seafood, it's pictures of, of beaches and rolling waves, and there's a spray of salt that comes into the air. So we're using technology, bringing it into the physical world in a way that creates an incredibly new experience. I've seen stores in the US and in other parts of the world go in and you look at an item, you see it on a shelf. You think, wow, that's really nice, but do they have it in red? You can take out your camera phone, you can look at the item, you can link to the store's inventory, you can see all the sizes and colors that they have it in, and you can render that through your phone on top of the physical space. Those technologies are here today, and I think we'll see those start to be adopted more and more over the next very short couple of years. Incredible evolution, and is this what you refer to as immersive commerce? And if so, how is uh, MasterCard facilitating this ecosystem? Yeah, so this is immersive commerce. This is commerce conducted, the exchange of anything that represents value in these worlds where technology has been overlaid on top of the physical experience. Uh, it's clearly going to affect payments, it's going to affect the way that we shop, but it, it will also affect other things that we exchange as value. So in that instance, they're exchanging their time for something. So it allows us, I think, to really start to redefine the exchange of value, not just in money and the way we think about that, but more broadly as society. And how do you foresee immersive commerce developing in the months and, and in, the, in the near term? I think in the near term, we're going to see some of those experiences in, in retail, um, in restaurants, in esports. I've seen, we've been talking to stadiums and uh, sports franchise where they're looking at enhancing the experience so that you, you're in a stadium, you're sitting with your friends, you're watching your favorite team on the pitch. You're wearing a set of glasses that augment reality, right? So it's just an ordinary set of glasses. And as your player is playing, you're seeing stats that tell you about their past completion rate, their last time that they were sold, their current market value. And you can engage then if you want to with their avatar to give you a slightly enhanced brand experience. We're seeing that now. It's experimentation largely today. But what we're finding is the technologies are almost ready for that really to start to scale. On the other extreme, Metaverse, the fully immersive experience, I think it'll take a little bit more time because the hardware itself needs to evolve. It's, it can be quite, um, it, 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 it's not an easy experience for everybody to be in a fully immersive headset for more than maybe 20 or 30 minutes. Our bodies just aren't used to it. But also the computational power to put that number of people into that environment and create a really good experience, it doesn't exist today. So it's gonna take some time, I think, before we see the fully immersive experiences play out in those worlds. But then I also look at gaming and I look at esports and I say, some users are already there. Absolutely, and what are the major trends that you see emerging in the digital landscape? How is MasterCard keeping up or even staying ahead of those trends? 
I mean, when we look at the big trends in the world today, really bucket them into kind of three main areas. I think the first one is that what we consider value and how we've considered money historically is expanding. We always thought about it as the cash in our wallets or the balances in our bank accounts. A couple of decades ago, we started to think about loyalty points as a form of value. More recently, cryptocurrencies. In some parts of the world, solar credits. Uh, people are net contributors of energy to the grid because they've a set of panels on their roof or a wind turbine in their back garden and they get a credit for that. Soon, we've got central bank issued digital currencies, but we've got NFTs enabling new digital asset classes. And I would argue data is also a form of value. So the definition of money is broadening to include these non-traditional asset classes. And I think we're going to need to be able to exchange those ubiquitously in the future, but with safety and security across them. So that's the first one. I think the second one, and we really got into it a little bit with the metaverse, is this overlay of technology on top of the physical world. I think that's going to transform all of the experiences that we have. And it's not just augmented and virtual reality. It's 5G, it's Internet of Things. It's this hyper-connected world and the way that we interact with it. And I think we'll get a few things wrong as we go down that journey. I had an example recently where when I hike with my son in the mountains, I love sometimes getting lost. It's that adventurous spirit in me. But yet, if my phone immediately starts dropping crumbs to get me back onto the right trail, that might not be an experience I want. So I think it'll be, we need to be careful about how we overlay the technologies into the physical world. And then the third bucket, I think, is ESG, which has really been a boardroom conversation, is going to become absolutely fundamental, and particularly diversity, inclusivity, and sustainability will become central to how we design, build, and service products. And I think that's going to be quite transformative. In the context of commerce, what information might we need to provide at a point of sale that tells people about the origin of their products because they care about where it came from? Did it come from countries that use child labor? Did it, um, is it, has it got sustainability credentials? For other people, their cause that they care about might be nationalistic. I, I want to support small and medium-sized enterprises that are in my area. But consumers are becoming more cause-driven, and we really need to take ESG from a boardroom conversation down into a deeper understanding of the consumer causes that they care about and build ESG into the products and services that we deliver. Really fascinating peek into the future. Thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.